Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today we're doing another smart art unboxing and artwork video. So let's just get right into it. I will have all the information for the box um, and the supplies listed in the description down below. But right away, uh, smart art is a monthly art subscription box and it sends you some random art supplies each month. And it does come with this pamphlet and when you first open it up, it gives you a little rundown of the history about the products that we're going to be using this month. It also lets you know what the products are, a little description of them, as well as the prices in US dollars. So convert that to whatever your currency is. It also gives you a beginner's project to start with. And then it gives you a little more of an advanced uh, project to do. And then it gives you some tips and pointers on the back, as well as our monthly prompts. So this month we have apple, maple, owl, and acorn. And if you complete all four prompts each month, then you get 500 peacock points, which is about $5 off um, your boxes if you want to put it towards the next month's box. Or you can save them up like I do and then get a free box every once in a while. So the first thing I see here is this uh paint tray is this 10 well paint tray and I love when we get um, paint palettes like this and I really appreciate that the subscription boxes that I'm subscribed to so smart art and palettful packs they've both been sending uh, paint trays when we get sort of any kind of water soluble media and I really appreciate that and it says this retails for 219 and these are pretty easy to clean as well. I just take them under the sink and rinse them out. Ooh, and right away I see our candy for the month. So I am going to take this out because I will be eating this afterwards. So this is the Twizzlers and it's strawberry. The next thing I see here are these Ecoline uh, brush pen markers. And already I'm loving the colors. If you guys know me by now, you know these are some of my favorite colors. So I love that. It says these Talons Ecoline range is known for bright, brilliant colors, and the Ecoline brush pen markers are no exception. From the high quality concentrated dyes and a liquid watercolor base, the low odor ink is pleasant to use and easy to apply. It mixes cleanly and adheres well to watercolor paper, drawing paper, and boards. The resilient brush nib is great for covering large areas as well as very fine details. And so I am excited that it is a brush nib. So if you can see there. And yeah, they're all, so they must all be a brush nib. And I like the chunky feel of these markers. Oh, and these retailed for uh, $12.75 or $4.25 each. Then I see these Graphics Aqua Metallic Inks. And let me just get them out here. And it looks like we get them in three colors. So this is uh, pearl lilac, this is pearl red, and this is pearl blue. So that's really fun. We get a, a blue, a red, and a lilac. And we did receive um, some Graphics Aqua inks, but they were just regular colors. I believe it was their primary packs. And I have a video uh, using those as well. I don't remember if it was Smart Art or Palettful, but I loved those. I loved the formula in those. But this says that these uh, Marabou Graphics Aqua inks are ultra brilliant, water-based watercolor ink that is naturally transparent and highly light fast. So that's really cool. Use this ink with a brush or a drawing pen for watercolor techniques or with a dip pen for lettering, even when dry, Graphics Aqua ink can be dissolved with water and reworked. Shake vigorously before use. And these retail for $9.87 or $3.29 each. So that's really cool. So if we look at the bottoms here, I hope you guys can see, you can see how some of the pearlescent and the color has split a little bit. So that's really cool. I hope you guys can see that. So these will be exciting to kind of try. And here's our sticker for the month. So this sort of has some nice autumn-y color feels to it. I like that. Very pretty. The next thing I see here are these Fluid Art brushes. And it says, use these convenient fillable brushes on the go or in the studio, wherever you create. They're versatile and great for any type of art, painting, sketching, stamping, mixed media, and more. Simply unscrew and fill with water, alcohol, ink, watercolor, or whatever fluid medium you desire. And these retail for 9 dollars 
So that's pretty cool. So it looks like we have a five millimeter flat tip. Is that flat? Yeah, so we get a flat one, five millimeter flat, four millimeter round, and three millimeter round. And I love using uh, water brush pens like this with ink tents pencils or my watercolor pencils. They're really versatile. And so it'll be really interesting to try this brand because I've not tried these ones before. And I just pulled out one of the ones that I typically like to use and it looks like they're actually the exact same. So let me find maybe this size. So this one might be the same size as my small one. Let's see if I take the caps off here. No, okay, it's about, yeah, it's about the size of this little one here, the tip. Although I've been using these ones, so I have water in them right now. But uh, basically, if I toss those off to the side, all you do for these ones is just put them under the sink like this, let the water run in. They've got like a stopper here, so it's really nice. So even if I leave my brush like upside down, even though I've got water in this, it's not gonna leak out until I push this. So I love these types because it's really good with water control. So, you know, I'm not risking the water coming out if I don't want it to. And normally when I'm doing it, you know, I can just brush a couple of times to get the water to start to flow. And then you get enough water on the br bristles there to kind of blend out whatever you're doing in a little area. So these are really, um, really nice. And I love the ones that have the stopper there because it just makes you so much easier. Um, and it's not super, well, the ones that I normally use aren't super sensitive. So, you know, a little push if I'm accidentally pushing like this the, the water's not coming out like you actually have to really give it a good push so even if you hold it up a little further and you're just giving it like some you know no no water's coming out so I really um, like that about these and then these are the other two tips here so we'll see you know how much of a point we can get out of these ones once water's added to the tips because it looks a little like frayed right now but we shall see. The next thing I see here are these graphics aqua colors. And it says with the pigmented aqua color watercolors from Marabou Graphics, they can be used neat and undiluted or delicate and thinned with water, however you need it. So this is pretty cool. So it looks like we get a black, a burnt umber, a burnt sienna, yellow green, a rich green, Prussian blue, violet, carmine red, vermilion, yellow ochre, lemon yellow, and white. So you pretty much get all the colors that you would need to create something. So let's just get them out and look at them. Okay, and this is what the tubes look like. And they're pretty good sized tubes. They're 12 mil tubes. So, you know, that's a pretty good size tube. Now, I don't imagine there would be any light fast information for this brand because I don't really think, you know, even though these say that they are highly light fast, um, I don't imagine that they're watercolors would be but if I find any information about that I will obviously link it down in the description below um, but I've noticed here that these do say they conform to the ASTM standard which would be light fast you know they would have light fast ratings um, however I'm not seeing that on any of this packaging but again considering the price because these are $14.99 um, I wouldn't expect them to be light fast and the last thing I see here is this Fabriano watercolor paper. It says that it is cold pressed, super color retention and intensity outstanding for lifting and scrubbing abilities. So that must mean that the paper must stand out, stand up pretty good. It's 140 pounds. This is a seven by 10 inch paper. And it feels, you know, fairly thick and it's got, it's quite textured actually. Oh, and I like that um, it's perforated. So if you want to, you know, take your piece of paper out afterwards, you don't have to like deal with cutting this off. That's pretty cool. And it looks like the texture is a little bit different, maybe front to back. This seems to be just a little bit slightly smoother and maybe this is a little bit more textured. This is the Fabriano 1264 watercolor pad features 140 pound or 300 GSM cold pressed acid free textured watercolor paper in bright white that works for all wet techniques as well as lifting and scrubbing for students and professionals. 
use with watercolor, gouache, acrylic, acrylic ink, pen and ink, and pencil and colored pencil. Now, I don't know how colored pencil would fare on this because it is quite textured, um, but maybe if you're using something like OMS, it would be okay. This 100% virgin wood pulp paper is made using hydropower and is FSC certified, and it is made in Italy. So that's kind of cool. And then it's got some information here about, I think, the Fabriano company and maybe the paper. Um, I wonder if it says, yeah, you get 30 sheets in here. So that's a pretty good amount of sheets. And I do um, really like this. So I'll be interested to try out this paper and see how that does. So that's all of the items in this box this month. So I'm going to go ahead and since we've got a few different items, I think I might uh, play around and do some swatches and I might show you guys how the swatches look. Um, let me know down in the comments below, do you want to see me do the swatching part in like real time and kind of talk through it or just kind of like get that over with, show you and then just get on to the artwork um, because that's normally what I like to do. But if you guys want to see the swatches being done and me, you know, talk about them, my thoughts about them as I'm doing it, then let me know down in the comments below and I will certainly do that. But that's what I'll do. Um, do some swatches, then I'll create some art, you know, for our prompts and we'll get right into the artwork. Okay, so these were the swatches from all the supplies. And I put this black marker line here just to see how the white did, how opaque it was. And it's like not really that opaque. I hope you guys can see that there. These watercolors are very vibrant. And what I did was put down a color swatch here and then I blended it out with just clean water. And they're so like pigmented that the water just kind of leached all the color out. And so it almost didn't make like a gradient. And as you can see here when I was swatching, the, the colors are pretty bright. So I was impressed because I thought these would be full of fillers lot more fillers than just the pure colors so that's kind of neat and then these were the three brush pens that we got and what I did here was laid it down blended it out and then I laid them down here and let them dry and sit for about a half hour and then I tried to blend them out and the orangey one blended out pretty darn good I don't know if you guys can see that but the pink and the purple just had a slight hint of some edges left but they did pretty good and these were the Pearl um, Marabou Aqua inks that we got. And I hope you guys can just see how shiny and pretty those are there. And this paper does take water pretty well. Um, now it doesn't soak in like an arches paper or anything like that. It stays on the surface. But a couple of these places I laid down a lot of water and we got some blooms here. But it's kind of really pretty too the way that it bloomed out. So I quite like how these swatches turned out. So I'm going to go ahead and sketch something. I don't know if I'll sketch it in the book or I might take it out. Just depending on the design, I decide if I'm going to use a lot of water, I'll probably want to tape it down. Um, but that's what I'll do. I'll go ahead, sketch something out, and then we're just going to jump right into the artwork. I think this month's box is my favorite box yet from Smart Art. Water-based mediums are my jam, and I loved this box so much. Now, I may have cheated a little bit because usually my rule is I try to combine all four prompts into one image, but I just couldn't think of anything at all, so I did end up doing all four separately. And I will explain them as I go because I did try to use different products and different techniques for each one. Now, for this first piece, the owl that you're seeing, I was really inspired by Naughty Egg Draw. So if you're not subscribed to Smart Art's YouTube channel, I would encourage you to go over there and subscribe because Naughty Egg Draw does one of the prompts on their channel for each week. And one of the first ones that he did, he used the markers and did a dog portrait and I really loved how the colors came out and how bright and colorful it was. So it really inspired me to try that with this owl. So as you see here, I go along with each color and I'm laying it in and as I'm laying it in, the colors are drying but man, did they re-wet beautifully. And the reason I went one color at a time for this piece is because I knew the orange and the purple could make muddy colors and I didn't want um, the red from the orange and the pink. But my gosh, these markers performed just beautifully. I could blend them out completely. As you saw with the um, 
when I did the swatches and I showed you guys that, they blended out so lovely. And even when I was doing this and I just wanted to feather it out a little bit, I could use them either way. And I think I would actually purchase more of these markers and especially using them on this paper. And I will touch on this paper later. Now, you also saw that I took the Graphics Aqua Metallic inks, and I just used the red one and the purple one here, um, and I did mix them up a little bit beforehand, and I basically just stuck my brush in there and got some pigment, and then I was trying to splatter it around the owl, and I really like the effect, and I like how it gives it a little bit of a glittery effect around him as well, but my gosh, these metallic inks took forever to dry forever and I even tried taking out my heat tool to get them to dry a little bit and it still took forever. I don't know if they're just a little bit thicker or if it's whatever glitter or pigment that's in them but I mean they took forever to dry so be aware of that. So when I did the swatches for the Graphics Aqua watercolors I used them while they were still wet in the palette. However when I went on to go do the next three images it had been a few days and they had completely dried onto the palette and I thought this would be the perfect test to see how they would re-wet and they re-wet beautifully. I went ahead and put a couple of drops of water on a couple of them at first and then I left a few of them dry and to be honest I didn't really notice a difference of which ones I had put the water on before and which ones I hadn't. The colors were very pigmented and they mixed well together. The only thing I noticed is with the maple leaf, the one that I'm doing first. I tried to put down some clear water first and use a wet and wet technique because if you watch any of my watercolor um, artworks here on the channel, I love doing wet and wet and it just lets the colors blend so beautifully together. However, this paper isn't wet and wet friendly. So if you're looking to get a good paper that you wanna use wet and wet and really soak it and let the colors soak in and bleed together, this Fabriano paper is not for you. However, it does have some really great qualities to it that I will touch on later. One thing I did notice though is I kept putting water onto the paper, pigment on, more water, more pigment, but I didn't get any blooms. Now, whether that's because I'm pretty good at water control now with watercolor, or is it because there's something in the paper as well that helps prevent blooms? I'm not sure, but I was quite surprised about that but I just couldn't get the brightness um, with the watercolors that I wanted using that technique. Now, when I went on to do the acorn, I did it a little bit differently where I had my brush wet enough so that when I put the first layer down and then I put the brown in between, they would blend a little bit together. So I made sure that the paint was always wet enough that when I was putting another color into it, it would mix together. And this worked so well on this paper. Um, and especially even with the shadow, I put some color down and then I sort of let it fade out a little bit with some water on my brush and that worked beautifully on this paper. So I think instead of using wet and wet, you could use this technique or where I went on with the apple. What I ended up doing was just laying the first color down. So you're seeing I'm laying green everywhere. Then I let it dry. Then I go in with my yellow and my orange. Then I let it dry. Then I'm going on top with my reds. And as I'm doing each color, I'm trying to blend it into the color before it. And I think this was actually my favorite way to use these watercolors on this paper. It just glazed and blended that way so beautifully. I think that if I was gonna use this paper, that's how I would use it in the future. And you'll see at the end that I do try to grab some of that white watercolor and do a little bit of detail on top of the acorn and the apple. And that's hit or miss for me. It is a little bit opaque, but you have to get it quite concentrated. But it's also got this weird sort of texture to it and weird look where it's not like a high quality white pigment. Um, but I mean, it would do the job. So for the Fluid Arts brush set, it's a three water brush set and I didn't end up really using the flat one at all. I mostly used the big one and then I ended up using the little one here and there for some details. However, I noticed using that bigger brush, the round brush, I lost quite a few hairs out of it and you'll see at some points I'm picking them out of the brush because they just end up coming out and I don't know if that's just a manufacturing thing with the brush or what because these brushes look very similar to the ones that I have and love and use all the time and I've never had any hairs come out of those and I've had those for I want to say at least almost a year 
So I'm not sure if this is just maybe the glue wasn't as set in with these brushes or something, but that being said, these brushes did perform excellently well. I used them with all of the pieces here and I really enjoyed using them. And they do have really good water control and that's one thing I really like about them. Last but not least is this Fabriano watercolor paper. And oh my gosh, look out Canson watercolor paper because there is a new player in town. I think this Fabriano paper has just hit my number one spot for non-cotton papers. So if you're looking for a good paper that will handle a lot of water, won't bloom easily, will let the water and the colors mix well on the paper, this paper handled scrubbing because you'll see in the apple I was trying to scrub out some highlights and I ended up going on top with some of that white afterwards, but it handled the scrubbing. The paper didn't come up at all. Um, this was really great paper and I am very happy that we received it because I don't know if I would have gone out and bought this paper for myself, but I think I'm in love with it. Now, I did tape the paper down when I was doing the maple leaf, apple, and acorn, but honestly, I don't think I would have because this paper does not buckle at all, barely any at all, and I'm so surprised with that. Even when I was drying it, because sometimes cheaper paper will buckle once you start drying it as well, and this paper just performed so well. I am so surprised. Way to go, Fabriano. <laughs> Let me know if you guys have tried this paper before and what you think of it, especially if you've ever used some cotton papers. Thank you guys so much for watching, and as always, I will see you in the next one. Bye!